Hello, let's look at some code. I've written this from scratch and I've been trying to avoid using ChatGPT because I think it's potentially a bad habit to get into. So I've written all of this from memory and using the compiler and obviously the online hints that you get with Rust Analyzer. What this does is it creates a struct of an animal um, with an age and some legs and a name. I've got an enum cat, rabbit, mouse. So the pet can only be one of these three types. I've implemented display, so a custom display, which just prints the name. Um, I've also implemented partial EQ, which basically checks if the age of the instance that I'm using is the same as the age of the thing that I'm comparing against. Uh, we'll see that a bit lower down in main. So here we go, we've got cat. Um, that's a bit unfortunate, I gave it three legs. Give it its fourth leg back. Um, so cat, rabbit, mouse. So we've just got three instances of the pet struct. Um, this is the bit that uses fold. So fold, if you've not used fold before, the Rust documentation, here it is, it actually describes it as the sum of all the elements of the array, which is fine, but in actual fact, why don't you just use sum? And I think there's a there's just a little bit of a need for some additional explanation here, which is that fold enables you, or you can use fold with Filter, potentially you probably could with some anyway, but well, but let's just run the, um, we just run this code in Rust Playground. And you can see it equals six, so no sleight of hand going on there. Um, let's just close that. This example, there's a lot of stuff in here about left associative and it's common for people who haven't used iterators a lot to use a for loop with a list of things to build up a result. Those can be turned into folds. So that's all fairly basic. But you could also do numbers.iter.fold, you start with zero. So you get the same result whether you use for loop or whether you use for, sorry, for loop or fold. What it's doing is it's reducing the elements to a single one by repeatedly applying a reducing operation. If the iterator is empty, it returns none, otherwise returns the result of the reduction. The reduction the reducing function is a closure with two arguments, an accumulator and an element. So the accumulator is basically the, the sum of all the things so far. The element is basically the, the next thing you want to add to it. Um, so that's probably enough theory. I'm not explaining that particularly well, but I've used it here. And what I started off with was I thought, well, let's just make a vector of pets. And I borrowed the pets because I want to use the pets at the end just to do my little comparison to check if the cat is the same as the mouse. And it's not saying is the cat struck the same as the mouse because if you remember, the impulse is just comparing the age. So pet here with the impulse is that's the implementation for the pet struct. So it's saying take the age of the current instance of the pet struct and compare it with the age of the other thing that you're comparing against. And then it says whether or not the age of the cat is the same as the age of the mouse. And in our case, the cat is three and the mouse is three. So we should get true there. Okay, so anyway, back to the fold. I've written this function. This function is the fold, does the folding. 
So we pass in our struct of pets here. And because we are we're borrowing it, we're not we're not taking ownership, we will still be able to use cat and the most mouse here at the end when we want to print. Okay, so the ages ages is the sum of the age of each pet in the vector. So we do dot VP is the vector of pets. Iter, filter. So I'm going to filter all the pets that are under 10. So as you can see here, cat is 3, rabbit is 15, and the mouse is 3. So I'm going to filter out the rabbit. So by filtering out the rabbit, we use a closure. Um, we pass in x, which borrow, and then we say if the age of x is less than 10, then we keep it. Um, and obviously, this is the iterator, so we will be keeping we will be keeping the cat and the mouse. So then we pass in the age of we start with zero, so our tally or our sum begins with zero. Now we're basically passing in the age of the cat, which is naught, and then it'll be naught plus three. So then our accumulator becomes three, and then next time round we're doing three plus the age of the mouse, so then it becomes six. And I've just used coercion, or uh, I've, I've said make it u16 because if you had a lot of old pets, then they might have a combined age of more than 255. So let's run it. And those are the three pets. So Tiddles the cat, Mickey the mouse, and Bugs the rabbit. Combined age of the pets that are age that are aged under 10 is six. So let me just um need a space there. better right now run it again and uh yeah the combined age of the pets that are aged under 10 is six so that's the cat age three and the mouse age three the cat is the same age as the mouse it's true and so all i'm doing there is just saying cat equals mouse so without the impul that would that would probably say false because the cat is not the same as mouse it's got a different name it's got different <laughs> So it's a different enum type. So implement partial EQ. The other one is partial ord. Um, there's four types all together. So you've also got ord and EQ. Um, don't ask me to remember all the differences. But um, when you create it, let me just show you. If I do, um, if we were to do impul partial we could do partial eek or partial ord i wonder if it I wonder if i type ord yeah so there's ord as well for pets and that offers you cmp max min and clamp i don't know what clamp is yet that's something that i will find out in due course so yeah you could do um this method returns an ordering. Okay, I'll leave that for another time. But um, yes, yeah, so you've got partial week, partial ord, and then you've also got ord and eq as well. So um, you could do impul eq as well. So you've got eq. I think one is a subset of the other, but don't quote me on that. Um, so yeah, this is using fold, and what I'll do is I'll put a link to the to this code in Rust Playground. I hope you find that useful. Don't don't just run what I've done. <laughs> Change it, break it, definitely break it. Try and break it. Um, I think that's the best way to 
work with anything is to break it. Um, even if it's a real life thing, as long as you don't break it too badly. Um, so then that falls over because I've changed the type. Then you have to make that type match. That still works, but obviously I tried to make it a bit more future proof, proof by using U16. Um, yeah, so that's just kind of me trying to remember how to do the in fact, with the type of language server that you get in Rust, it is quite good because if I'd forgotten how to do the format display, it does offer you most of it. I did it here. Impl FMT display or pet. You see how it fills most of it in for you. Um, so the only bit you actually really need to remember is, is that bit and um yeah the, the slight difference with doing a default not a default a an impul from this already made a trait that's already made for you is you notice know, here it returns format result because nearly everything i've done kind of in tutorials has always just been uh self with a capital s there um got right which is a macro there and yeah, that's the one thing to watch out for is that you do have to pass F, which is the formatter. So you send in across uh, the, the string and like the placeholder for the string, but you're also sort of sending back the the formatter, which obviously does the does the clever stuff. So you just need to remember to put that first before the colon. So I, ha I was getting an error because I'd forgotten to put it in, and I was getting that, and then the error I was getting was. Um, the error I was getting was telling me to put in a second pair of curly braces, which was leading me up the garden path a bit. So, um, yeah, just bear that in mind. Uh, what else can I talk about? I think that's it, really. But just fold, fold, and filter. I uh, remember that they don't have to just do the sum or the summation of the part, the components. In fact, I could start with a different number here. So if I start with um, two, so that should begin with two, and then should that give us eight? Yeah, so it's giving us eight. So some wouldn't obviously really give you that option. So with fold, you, you can keep adding uh, to your accumulator on each iteration but your starting number doesn't have to be you don't have to start from scratch you could always add in I don't know if that can be variable presumably it can let's try that as well let um oh, let's just call it six um presumably you can just put in six there yeah and then it gives us 12 because we had the, the six for the starting point and then we add on the age of the cat and then that gives us nine and then the next time around we add another three which is the age of the, the mouse so yeah you can put in a variable as well as just a number which is nice the examples will obviously obviously show you um zero uh which was just yeah, so the, the example examples will show fold starting with zero, but you can, you can start with whatever number you want. Um, yeah, just make use of the um, the Rust help. So if you'd forgotten kind of the syntax, let's do delete inside brackets. Uh, expected two arguments found. So then um, zero, and as you go, it pops up the help. I'm doing this in NeoVim, but obviously it would do the same in VS Code as long as you've got the Rust language. You have to scroll down to get to the example, and that example there is, in fact, the same example that we were just looking at in Rust documentation. So, all good, happy days. So, if I copy, um, I don't know if I can do that. Let me do that. I'll remember it anyway. 
ack x, ack plus x. <laughs> and I've made, I've done something wrong. Combined edge, what's going on here? Oh, is it because I've got the, um, let's just roll that back. What did I do wrong there? Oh, because I needed to do, do the actual age. I needed to extract the age from the thing that I was passing in. And, um, Yeah, I just got that warning back fix because I'm not using it anymore. Good. Well, thank you for watching. That's just a bit of a random, not really random, but I'm just kind of showing fold, filter, and just kind of um, just covering the default impulse again, which, again, going back to what I did in a very early video on this channel, but I was talking about Feynman technique, which is be able to understand something or to understand something well it's good practice to try and explain it or teach it <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm teaching but I'm attempting to explain and repetition and recall so I try not to use chat GPT too much try and just to stick with the Rust documentation and obviously the Rust documentation pops up in in your editor anyway if you're using the language server if you're wondering what how i've got my editor set up i'm using neo vim with the rust language server which is obviously the same language server that runs behind the scenes with vs code anyway you've got all of these coc um this coc is something which you can install in addition to the Rust language server. It gives you a lot more <coughs> things. Excuse me. So, I've got hiccups. Apologies. Um, yeah, so if you want to just... Uh, let me just talk about NVIM as well uh, while we're here. I'll just show you my... I did have a problem with um, some brackets going a bit crazy. When I was creating a struct, it was kind of doing autocomplete and then putting some stuff on the line above. So what I did was I disabled all of the plugins, which I thought might be causing a problem. So um, I don't use any of these fancy uh, NeoVim kind of managers or, or things that supposedly do everything for you. Because I, I just, a bit of a control freak and I just want to know what everything does, every single thing. And I've built this up from scratch. Uh, if you If you would like a copy of this config, I'll, put it on github or a link in the video description so yeah cappuccino airline theme for that stripe at the bottom power line fonts i think i'm probably going to stick with this font the font that you just saw which is actually the um pro monospace i think it's the one which actually rust used in their documentation so if it's um yeah tree sitter Rainbow parentheses, um, Rust tools, auto pairs. Auto pairs is great because it creates a closing bracket for whenever you start start like a parentheses or curly braces. Completion, tree set and nerd tree. So yeah, when I'm with when I'm, I need to get into the habit of using this more. But if I do leader ff. Yeah, and you've got this nice kind of um, tech tui here. Um, and I've got, and then I use leader n. Oh no. I don't know what's going on there. Um, leader t. Ah, oh, this is this is all going to uh, going to pop now. There we go. Leader n. And then you've got like your file browser at the side. Then leader T to toggle it. What it and also I've started using the buffer in Vim rather than keep opening more tabs. So when you if I compile this 
and equip the left hand pane. You can see I can toggle in between various different buffers and that's something I still need to learn really because uh, I'm getting a bit of a muddle with gradually as I keep compiling I end up with more and more buffers so that's just something to be aware of. Especially if you start doing key bindings that I've got a key binding let me just show you as well. Uh, who's that? Okay, I've got a key binding that um, it does that I use with Rust to with Cargo to compile. Uh, where is it? I'll try and find it for you. I make it compile and also then I make it go to the left hand pane. Um, yeah, this one. F3, so it does vertical split. Um, then the backslash to escape the pipe. Then terminal cargo run dash dash quiet. I did assign that to an F key, but I can't remember if it's still... That should work. I don't know why that's not... No. I, my laptop has got some weird function key combos, and you have to hold down. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. So this has just been a quick... Or not even a quick, but a, a rather unstructured look at some code that I've... I think uh, it's just good to sometimes just write code from off the top of your head without... Imagine you're in a, um, a log cabin with no internet access. Just imagine that you, you're writing from scratch and you have to live and die by the sword. So, <laughs> It's a filter fold. It's not that difficult once you kind of familiarize yourself with it. So I'm, in due course, I will be looking at some more of these... Um, iterator methods there's so many i don't know what half of these are that's like that's uh here yeah. lots to learn thanks for watching i'll be back soon cheers